Hello and welcome to chapter five. We're gonna be looking at inventory and all the related ins and outs with respect to this account. So without further ado, let's dive right in. First, we need to talk about the different types of companies out there. In general, we're gonna be talking about the differences between service companies and merchandising companies. Service companies, as the name suggests, perform services as their main source of revenue. Service companies oh, may include items like GoWad. Uh, GoWad is my mobility app, so they sell me a service. I log on, I get told what mobility to do from them, and every month I give them, I think something like $15 uh, to develop a plan for me. So lots of software as a service, uh, those SaaS, that could be um, primarily service companies because while you are given items, those items are more of a service. However, in contrast, I get companies like that you would go in and buy something from a store would be merchandising companies. They're companies that buy or make stuff and then sell them to you. So this could include items like Loblaws. Within those merchandising companies, there are three main types. There's the retailers who we're familiar with, like Loblaws, that sell directly to customers. The retailers, however, are also customers um, because they buy their goods typically from wholesalers, you know, business to business, wholesalers to retailers. And then before the whole wholesalers, manufacturers actually make the goods uh, and produce the goods for sale to wholesalers. So where Loblaws is often um, kind of interesting is because they may have two or more of these. So they might manufacture their own goods um, and therefore go right to being retailers like for their, their private labels. Some companies are both merchandising and service companies. I can think of Peloton. Uh, I have the Peloton app, so I get the Peloton workouts, but I don't have a Peloton bike. So I use Peloton as a service company, not as a merchandising company, but because they offer both, they are both a service and a merchandising company. Okay, for our purposes of this course, we'll typically be talking about companies as if they're, you know, <laughs> as if those two lines don't ever cross, we'll be looking at, you know, them as service companies or merchandising companies. However, please just realize that in real life, um, there's often less uh, distinction than you might think. However, kind of cool, uh, in the news recently, uh, Peloton and Lululemon uh, teamed up and then Lululemon instantly cut a bunch of people from their workforce. And I say it's interesting because um, what they ended up doing was kind of using some synergies. So Peloton um, offers a bunch of workouts. Lululemon had the mirror and then they were selling um, classes uh, to, to do their you know, mirror workouts. But before that acquisition of the mirror, Lululemon was primarily a merchandising company. You went in, you bought their clothes, and you left. So the cool thing about them partnering up with Peloton is, and oh, separately, Peloton, you know, typically sold you workout equipment and or workout services, but then they had a line of clothing. Well now, Lululemon and Peloton, Lululemon will host Peloton's clothing line, and um, Peloton, I suspect, will be now servicing the existing mirror, um, but the, there won't be any more mirrors sold, any more quote equipment sold, and uh, those sales would be kind of um, meant to be, when you take out a competitor's product, like there's more market space for Peloton. And interestingly enough, I received uh, an email and a coupon for you know 10% off the new Peloton line under Lululemon, because I'm a member, but it's also just interesting seeing them get, get the word out to their, excuse me, existing customer base. All right, so, all that to say is understanding how different inventory, different companies work and understanding how inventory works, meaning we're gonna dig into this type of company um, or this type of side of each company in the subsequent chapter. Okay, so the operating cycle. The longer it takes to, <laughs> the longer it takes to go from cash to cash into producing revenues, meaning the longer it takes a merchandising company um, to make sales, the more costly it is. Merchandise must be purchased and then held and then finally sold to customers. This adds more time to the operating cycle. So typically, 
uh, the operating cycle is much longer for a merchandising company than for a sales company. I say typically because, you know, asterisks, um, <laughs> if you buy something and sell it, like a merchandising company, cool, like it's a tangible product, but for a service company, you might actually have to develop um, the software, develop the items, and we could be talking about like years and years, um, just depending. So typically the operating cycle would be longer for a merchandising company than a service company, but not always. In a merchandising company, we register, pardon me, we recognize revenue from the sale of merchandise as the main source, and we call this revenue sales. We look at our income statement in two different categories. The first being the cost of the goods sold, otherwise known as like the inventory. What's the cost of the inventory that you're selling? And then we have our operating expenses. And the operating expenses are all the other items that, expenses that must be incurred in order to support the cost of goods sales, but they're not directly related to the cost of that inventory. So we talk about gross profit, AKA gross margin, as sales less cost of goods sold. And so interestingly enough, when your sales are, um, are more than your cost of goods sold, that means that you're making money off of your products. When they're less, it means you would have done better had you not bought the inventory and sold, i.e. if you were closed, you would be making more money because right now you're at a loss. So for example, if your sales were $100, but your inventory costs you 110, you're losing $10 for every sale that you're making. So right off the hop, when looking at profitability, you must, at a bare minimum, have sales less cost of goods sold, sales less your inventory, as being positive. However, keep in mind, you also have all the other expenses incurred in the process of earning sales. So if those exceed your gross profit, then you're still gonna be negative. So the name of the game is making sure that you have enough gross profit left after your sales of uh, your inventory and after your operating uh, costs so that you have a profit at the end because this reflects, all, you know, what are you left with after you did all of that work and had all of that risk out there. All right, let's take a look and this is a tricky one, but this is going back to financial statements. How well do you know your financial statements? So give this a read. Um, essentially, these company A and company B are, they each have missing components. This you'll notice is a, an income statement, but it's just put horizontally instead of the typical vertically that we're used to seeing. So how do we use these different components and kind of algebra them around in order to figure out what is our sales or service revenues sorry, um, what is our cost of goods sold and what is our gross profit using all of these other types of inputs? And then similarly for, um, pardon me, backing up a little, what is our understanding that for company A, because cost of goods sold and gross profit are not applicable, what is going to be our number for income before taxes and net income? And similarly, looking at company B, what um, are our cost of goods sold gonna be and our operating expenses and our income tax expense going to be. And then uh, let me know, do you think company A is a merchandising or a service company? And do you think company B is a service company or a merchandising company? All right, give this video a pause and when you come back, I will be doing this in Excel with you. All right, welcome back. So to determine number one, what is going to be our income our income before income tax. Well, we have our operating expenses and we have our income tax expense. So our income before income tax is gonna be calculated as our revenue minus our operating expenses. So this is going to be our 100 minus our 65 and that is equal to our 35. Then we have what is our net income, knowing that our income tax expense is nine? Well, our net income is gonna be equal to our income before 
income tax minus our income tax of nine dollars all right i think you can see how this game is being played a little bit so it's really you know we understand financial statements and then if we have to do them backwards or some fill in the blanks sometimes uh, it can just really help solidify our understanding Alrighty. so number three if we have a revenue of 100 and then gross profit of 60 uh-huh that means our cost of goods sold must be 40 right because we have 100 minus 60 equals 40 and we can double check 100 minus 40 100 minus 40 equals 60 is our gross profit all righty moving along operating expenses so now we know that our gross profit i'll just kind of make a little note so let's see um okay our gross profit is 60. Oh, we can see it there um and then we have our income before taxes is 35. so 60 minus something equals 35 or 60 minus 35 equals that something all right equals 60 minus 35 is equal to our operating expenses of 25. and again just double check equals 60 minus 25 that gives us our income before tax of 35. awesome awesome all right last one 35 income before tax and net income of 26. so we have 35 minus 26 is equal to 9 and same thing 35 minus 9 double check equals our net income of 26. And I'm not sure if you all saw, but in the tips from the students the other week, um, one said that the way that they maximized their grade to on the first mini test was by calculating and then rechecking their numbers to make sure that they had the right number. Because yeah, it never checks. I like forwards and backwards when possible to double check. All right, so now B, which of the companies is service or merchandising and why? Well, this company B had inventory because they had cost of goods sold and gross profit. So because they had um, they had inventory, that means that company B is going to be, that's correct, company B is equal a merchandising company, merchandising company. So this would be like a Lululemon who's primary items are going to be their clothes that they sell their inventory and company a is going to be i don't even know if peloton would be more of a service or more of a merchandising so i'm just going to be um safe and say that um the company a you know what we'll just go with it um company a is going to be a service company um and this is going to be like peloton <laughs> um assuming uh they didn't have in uh, i don't like it okay uh let's call them another SaaS company a GoWad. yeah a GoWad company that has their app all right so um with all of that um love it uh we'll see you i'll pause it and i'll come back on the slides and we'll finish off this learning objective okay so let's dig into the nitty-gritty for flow of costs in a merchandising company we're going to start off with inventory on their books and then when we purchase items when we debit inventory credit cash or ap that means we're going to be adding to the existing inventory and that gives us our cost of goods available for sale so that's what's hanging out on our inventory balance available for sale and then once those items are sold then they're transferred from inventory into cost of goods sold so let me just say we are shopping at loblaws um they buy some stuff from their uh, wholesaler they're going to debit their inventory and they're going to credit their accounts payable then you go in and you are like i want all your strawberries um that would be a debit to their cost of goods sold because you walked out after buying their strawberries and it would decrease their inventory so be it credit to inventory uh, we would also have not discussed in this chapter but we would also have sales so they would take your cash and then sorry i'm running out of space um that would credit their revenue all right so we tend to focus on the first part of the sale when we're talking about the revenue um pardon me when we're talking about the inventory but just keep in mind that we also do have the revenue here all righty so i'm just gonna delete this 
we have three steps that are required and kind of see this is a very good slide for summary if you're taking one at like a screenshot for studying purposes we start off with our beginning inventory then um, we add whatever is purchased throughout um, the period and so then we have all the inventory or goods that are available for sale minus whatever is sold and then that is our cost of goods sold or we can go through each period and know that every time somebody walked in and bought the strawberries <laughs> that was a credit to inventory and a debit to cost of goods sold so a couple different ways you can go forwards or you can go backwards but this is the equation uh, that needs to balance to kind of understand the flow of inventory all right time for a question true or false uh, so each one of these questions will have a true or false answer. Uh, I'd love for you to pause the video now and give me your answer and then I'll do a take up in just a moment. Question one, the operating cycle of a merchandising company is ordinarily shorter than that of a service company. That's false. As discussed before, they need to, oh gosh, um, buy it from the manufacturer, then it goes to uh, the retailers, then it goes uh, to, pardon me, from the manufacturers to the wholesalers to the retailers. And you know, if you're like Loblaws, you might have some lines that where you're all three. It's a very long operating cycle. Whereas a service company, uh, typically you are just selling a service, uh, nothing to inventory there. Though we say ordinarily because there might be some development for that service company. So the answer here, one is false. All right, two, operating expenses are expenses that are incurred in the process of earning sales. And that is true. Uh, they are expenses related to uh, earning the sales they are incurred. However, they are just not directly um, the inventory that are sold, but rather support the inventory. An example of this would be like CEO salary. You're not seeing the CEOs out there stocking the shelves or you know, on the cash register. Nope, but they're in their office and doing stuff. So, and there's still an expense. All right, last one. Cost of goods sold plus beginning inventory is equal to goods available for sale. That is false. Goods available for sale is beginning inventory plus purchases. So, cost of goods sold are on the other side of the equation. In order to get goods available for sale, Goods available for sale, it's your beginning inventory plus your purchases. Hey, what is available? Alrighty. So now we have gotten to the end of the period and we need to make sure that, you know, oftentimes there is an inventory count that's done. Uh, definitely if you are a public company um, and you probably have them done more than just at the end of the year, but definitely at the end of the year. You may be recording inventory as you're selling it, or um, and if so, which it makes you know it's good, and that's going to be the focus of the rest of this chapter. However, just know that no matter how good uh, you are at counting your sales, maybe you miscounted, uh, and or maybe somebody stole your inventory, and or maybe your strawberries were rotten, um, or maybe you thought that you had more than you did. You know there was a miscount when there was purchasing, kind of some of your Wholesalers may have shorted you on purpose or accidentally. Regardless, at the end of the day, you think you have, I don't know, $100 million worth of inventory, otherwise known as 100. Um, and when you count your books, pardon me, when you count your inventory on wherever, you have 98 million. So now you have a difference of what you thought you had, 100 minus what you actually have, 98, uh, $2 million of shortages otherwise known as shrinkage so this is an expense this is directly related to the product expense goodness i don't even know maybe if you were selling snow cones that ice could have literally evaporated or melted you know what i'm talking about but regardless it's an expense it goes to our cost of goods sold because our inventory it's a cost of doing business with inventory um we debit we debit the cost of goods sold and we credit the inventory. And then at the end, our inventory on our books will equal our inventory that we counted. And yeah, it's um, it's a price of doing business here. Awesome, everybody. Uh, thank you for your attention and I will see you in the next video.